What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first of hopefully very many episodes to come. We all know that I'm not the most consistent when it comes to this stuff, but we're going to try and do every week, every game, covering Thursday night to Monday night. Start it off. Tonight we have Chiefs and Ravens. Seems to be a bit of rival game right now. A lot of uh, back and forth talk on social medias and everything else between these two teams. Big powerhouses. Two of the top five, arguably maybe top three quarterbacks in the league between Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes. Um, this one should be very exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a great game to kick off the season. Uh, so yeah, stick with us throughout the entire season. We're gonna try. I'm gonna try and do this. You know, Sig won't be doing it. Sig's not here. Sig is dangerously enough to understand sports, but doesn't get into it as much as I do. Um, so we're gonna try and get through this and see how we can do. But uh, like we said earlier, Ravens Chiefs Thursday night, week one, kicking off the season. Uh, like I said, should be a huge matchup. More than likely, you're gonna see a lot of big points kick off. Derrick Henry's back with. Or, with a brand new team, not back with anybody, with a brand new team, uh, better line than it had back in Tennessee. Uh, expecting to see a lot of big things out of him. Maybe some big plays, uh, but I don't know if he's going to have the seasons that he's had in the past. He's getting older. He's a little more prone to accidents of uh, injuries and things like that. So we'll see what, uh, what he can do if he can stick with this line and have a banger season or not. Um, on the other side, Isaiah Pacheco. Being the running back for the Chiefs, uh, the guy runs like he hates the ground, but is a, uh, I see a top 10 running back. I have a hard time putting him in top five, but the guy can produce, can get yards and everything else. Uh, so look for him to at least get one touchdown. Again, if uh, I will point out these things too. Uh, some bigger players like Derrick Henry, uh, Lamar Jackson, Pacheco, Mahomes, Rashi Rice, uh, to name a few, Zay Flowers maybe. Uh, I do fantasy football as well. I don't know if I'm going to cover fantasy or not. We'll see. Um, I've played fantasy for many, many years. Um, but if I do find anybody that's interested in fantasy, I'm in, I think, four different leagues right now. So we'll see how this, this first week goes. I'm not going to do a fantasy one this week. So if I can do it next week, great. Uh, but we'll see. I'm strictly going to cover just the games this week. But I will point out some, some guys to kind of look at. And if you're into betting, I do that as well. I'm not very successful because I like to just kind of play the odds and and uh, go for the big paydays and things like that. I don't drop big money. I don't make big money. I just do it to have fun. So, um, but yeah, Thursday night game should be great. Uh, so look for that one. I'm taking. Uh, I'm gonna take the Chiefs to win that one. Should be should be a good one. I don't know what the over under is on this one. Um, again, I can look at that later. But next week maybe look at that. Uh, Friday night. Friday night is the is the night I'm looking looking forward to the most. Packers Eagles if you can't tell if you see the video if not I'm an Eagles fan been an Eagles fan for a very very long time if you listen last season I covered a couple couple games uh, did a couple episodes on them Packers Eagles Jordan Love Jalen Hurts I mean you're you're out waiting in uh, in quarterbacks in, in my opinion you got a very young quarterback within Jordan Love and a seasoned veteran with Jalen Hurts um, by a couple by I guess that's not true I guess by one or two years, I think. Um, but we'll see what Jordan Love can do. He had a great season last year uh, with what he did. Made it to the playoffs. Had a good run with everything. Um, lost Aaron Jones. And I think they picked up... I can't remember who their back of running back, or who running back is now. But... Uh, oh, it's Josh Jacobs. So, again, I, in my opinion, that's a, that's a down ball. Not the, uh, not the running back that they want or need. In that, in that team, but I do think that uh, he can do things, but I don't know how well he will do behind that backfield. Uh, again, with with the the Raiders backfield that they had, Jacobs could produce um, again our top ten running back, but I'm not sure if it's if it's going to pan out for him. We'll see how he does. Um, I do have him at least getting you know scoring one touchdown, either falling over the goal line on the on the goal line to you know. The first and goal line type runs like that, just short yardage stuff. Um, on the other side, Saquon Barkley's now moved over to the Eagles, and I'm not nothing more than happy for that one. Uh, hate to see him wasted at the Giants. Son is a Giants fan as well, so he lost his running back, and just like the Thursday night game, my other son lost his running back, Derek Henry, to the to the Ravens. So I'm happy to to have Barkley move over to the Eagles. Um, 
A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and the late sign of Jahan Dotson. Is he, is he going to be anything, or is he just going to be a distraction to help A.J. and Devontae get down the field, open it up, and everything else? Uh, beefed up the defense. Offensive line, yes, we lost Jason Kelsey, which really sucked, but you know, Cam Jurgensen has moved into where he's at, doing his stuff, uh, hoping to see this offensive line open up, open up holes, leave gaps for uh, Barkley to get through, and also Jalen Hurts can run, touch, push, will maybe be moved away from. We'll see what happens with that one, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised as obviously see, see it in short yardage, you know, and save, save Saquon for for bigger plays or something else. But again, he may be the workhorse that they that they've been looking forward to kind of open up what Jalen Hurts wants. Um, Jordan Love, dude's got an arm. He's got he's got some receivers. I mean, Christian Watson and a few others out there. So we'll see what happens. There's a lot of Packers fans being in the Midwest. They're everywhere. Not many Eagles fans. Um, I guess say more since they won the Super Bowl. But um, not many Eagles fans in the Midwest compared to the Packers fans. It's definitely dominated by the Cheeseheads in, in where I'm at. Um, so I've got a neighbor who I'm probably going to take my Eagles flag and plant it in his front yard tomorrow morning so he can enjoy waking up to that and probably come chase me down. Um, but in this one, I'm going to take take the Eagles. This is a home game for the Eagles, but they're in Brazil. I'm using air quotes. Uh, they're in Brazil, and not very many people are happy about this game because it is in Brazil. Um, teams are recommended to not leave the hotel or not allowed to leave the hotel. They're going to be bus to the stadium, and then immediately after the game, bus back, and I wouldn't doubt to see that they're on a flight directly after that, getting out of there. Um, I know a couple of players have talked about how they don't understand why, they'd rather not go. Players have told their families not to come, because they don't trust the security, the you know dangerous place, whatever. The crime rate in that area is very high, but um, NFL's doing what they can to broaden the horizons and bring fan bases together to say the least, I know they, they do it all over the world. They're trying to do more. Uh, but we'll see if they play in Brazil again or not. Uh, but yeah, I'm taking the Eagles in this one to win it by a, I'm going to say a large margin. I don't. I think they're going to definitely cover any spreads that are out there um, and look for, you know, big plays to happen. And uh, I do see the defense of this one scoring a touchdown for the Eagles as well. So we'll see. Uh, Sunday. Sunday after, I'm not going to, again, college, so many college games. I don't. I don't have time to cover college. I don't invest too much time in college. I'll have it on as I'm doing stuff throughout the day on Saturday. But Thursday and Thursday, Sunday, Monday are my days to really get into it. And uh, this first one we'll get into Sunday, be September eighth at noon. Panthers at New Orleans. I mean, what do, what do we do with with this game? It's will it be on? Somewhere, yes, not one I'm paying attention to. I may have a couple players. I don't think I actually, I don't, I don't have any Panthers, I don't have any Saints in this one. Um, but with this one, I mean, I'm gonna take more than likely, I'm gonna take the Panthers in this one. I'm gonna have Bryce Young coming out doing something, you know, after his season last year, kind of a redemption year for him in his sophomore year to do something very well for himself. Um, I've got him winning this one, close one or not. Um, yeah, I, can, I mean, I can break down players in this one, but really, this is one that, unless you're a fan of one of these two teams, I don't think you're going to have this one on at noon. Um, followed by Vikings-Giants. This game will be on at our house because, like I said, one of the kids is a Giants fan. Um, he will want to see how Daniel Jones does with his overpaid contract against the uh, Vikings with a saddened quarterback locker room. They lost J.J. McCarthy. I think their backup is now Sam Bradford. No Aaron Jones. Or, I'm sorry, no Dalvin Cook in this one. Uh, he is now a cowboy, oddly enough. Um, and their their backfield is probably going to be hurting quite a bit to see what they can do in this one. Um, this one, I mean, your overpaid quarterback against your seasoned quarterback who has been a backup for majority of his life in the in the NFL, uh, this one I I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Giants in this one. I think they start the season off one and zero with a slim victory over the over the Vikings. Uh, bad thing is that you may see a decline for anybody playing fantasy in Justin Jefferson or Addison. I think Addison also has an injury um, for the Vikings. I think Neighbors also might be dealing with a knee injury within the Giants organization as well. Um, I do see it being a, a close game. It, 
more likely to be an exciting game. We did go to Minnesota two years ago to watch Vikings and Giants, and it was a it was an exciting game. Giants did not pull that victory out. Um, so my son wasn't happy because we went to that game. It was uh, New Year's or Christmas Eve, and it was a it was a rough Christmas morning for him. But we had had a good time. Great stadium as well. If you're making to the Minnesota stadium, it's a dome. It's nice. Uh, definitely keeps you in from when it's cold as hell there. So uh, yeah, again, Giants pulled this one off in a slim margin as well. Uh, followed by another 12 o'clock game. And this is all 12 o'clock Midwest Central Time for us. 12 o'clock games here. Um, Titans Bears. This one's kind of funny because my oldest son is a Titans fan, and my daughter is a Bears fan. So she's only she's only seven. So she's she's a Bears fan now. We'll see if she ends up talking talking trash like she's been doing all week about you know the Bears game, the Bears beating the Titans. She's got the whole outfit, everything else. Um, so my son being older, he's about ten years older than her. It'd be kind of funny to see what what happens here. Um, with this one, they. Traded Malik Willis, their backup. So the quarterback room has got a little smaller there with the Titans. Um, Will Levis being their one that's going to have leading. No Derrick Henry. You now have Tony Pollard in that backfield. Um, we'll see what happens with that one. And, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is there. Um, man, it's a it's a decent team. And I say decent very, very uh, mildly. Because this Titans team is, I think, in full rebuild mode. Um, the Bears are, I think, trying to go all in with their new quarterback in Caleb Williams. Uh, they added DeAndre Swift, who left the Eagles, and is now a Bear. Uh, they brought in Keenan Allen, Deion, DJ Moore in the passing game. Definitely some veteran seasoned people around a very promising rookie within Caleb Williams. Um, I do have the Bears one in this one. I think that uh, DeAndre Swift has a decent game. Keenan Allen, um, if he stays healthy, can't help support DJ Moore to get down the field. Uh, DJ Moore can be solid, but again, he has two se very well-seasoned veterans in this you know, receiving core, so look for the Bears to pull off that one. Um, I th I'm looking at least by two touchdowns, if not you know, 10-plus points in that one as well. Uh, followed by another 12 o'clock game, Texans-Colts. Um, I am not an Anthony Richardson fan. Uh, I think it all stemmed from the preseason game last year when he scored against the Eagles and started doing the, you know, the flapping wings, flapping your arms as if the Eagles do. Kind of the mocking thing. So he's he's tainted my likeliness for him. And it might just be the whole rival thing of like, okay, you acted like that at the at the Eagles stadium even the link. So we'll see how your season goes. Sadly enough, he got hurt last season. So... Sophomore year for him in a redemption season to see how he does. Um, but against a solid, solid quarterback within C.J. Stroud, he's coming in his sophomore season as well. Again, they call it the sophomore slump. I do think that C.J. Stroud does regress this season, has a mediocre season. Um, I still think they can make the playoffs with what he has around him. Um, but I don't I don't see them winning this one. I do see the Colts pulling this one out as well with a uh, – I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think this one will be another tight tight game. A lot of tight games so far, I, I think, within this this week. Um, being week one, a lot of rookie quarterbacks, a lot of sophomores, you know, second-season quarterbacks for these guys uh, in these first few games that we've gone, even gone over. Um, it'll, be, it'll be a good one. I will watch this one as well. It'll be, you know, I'll break out these games in the different quadrants that I've got on my on my TV when I do it, just like Sunday Ticket, all that stuff. I'll break them all up, and uh, and I'll watch them. It's it's going to be a fun game. I'm excited to see what Jonathan Taylor can do if he does anything um, for that team again. But like Nico Collins and Tank Dell for the for the Texans are going to be some some players that may have some breakouts, and we'll we'll see what they can really do. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the the Colts in that one. Even, you know, I'm not an Anthony Richardson fan. See, hopefully hopefully he can bounce back and do it better. You know, a lot better last year, obviously. He was hurt. But uh, have a decent year, start off his year. Great, and see what he can do. Next, next game, Patriots-Bengals. Uh, another 12 o'clock noon game. Man, this is going to be a uh, tough season for Patriots. No Bill Belichick. And I think this is the time to where you're going to start to see the Patriots become the new... Browns team. I don't. I don't think they have a good season. I think they're going to start to become 
the laughing stock of the of the NFL from that legacy dynasty that you know Brady Belichick back and forth. You know since Brady left, Belichick's been going downhill. Uh, obviously lost his coaching position uh, and is not even coaching this season. So we'll see what they can do within their. Uh, I don't even know who their starting quarterback is because that's I'm not, I'm not a Patriots fan by any means. Uh, but again, you're going against the Bengals. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. No longer they no longer have Joe Mixon, so I think they have Zach Moss as their starter. Um, T. Higgins. I mean, you've got that that trio right there, just between the quarterback and the two two receivers. Um, Burrow can do his thing, minus the the blonde hair he's rocking now. Um, so this is gonna be a blowout game. Uh, hands down, Bengals win this game. I'll be shocked to see the Patriots come up, come up and do this one, and even show up to really do anything. Um, I'm taking Bengals all out in that one. Uh, and it's what is to say about that one. Uh, Cardinals Bills, another 12 o'clock game. Um, Kyler Murray, I think, has a bounce back year. Does something for his team that uh, they've been waiting for. Uh, yes, Call of Duty's out. There's a lot of Call of Duty going on, but I think he's he's back to do his thing. Um, fight for his, his position, fight for his team, lead him to something this year. Um, with James Conner in the backfield, look for that guy to also maybe have a breakout season as well. I think he's going to be another top 10, if maybe not top 5 by end of the season. Watch what he can do. I think he's, he's an exciting player to watch when he's healthy. Same thing with Kyler Murray. Um, I do think that this, this Cardinals team will be something to watch throughout the season. Um, but on the other side of the ball, you got Josh Allen. And that's about it for that team. I'm not, I'm not impressed with this team anymore. Uh, I don't think there's really anything with this team. I think there's going to be a huge decline in the Bills. Uh, I think Josh Allen declines as well. I know there's a lot of Bills fans out there, but I'm not, I'm not sold on this team. I see the Cardinals. Um, it's still going to be a close game. I think regardless of what, what goes on, I do think Allen can put some stuff together. And I think he's going to probably lean heavily on this tight end. I think it's still Frank Knox. If I'm, no, it's Kincaid, uh, I think. So many so many players, so many different teams have bounced back and forth, or players have bounced back and forth between teams. But uh, look for him to lean on his tight ends a little bit more in the run game. But uh, I do think Cardinals pulls one out in a, in a tight matchup, you know, within a, within a touchdown, you know, three to seven points in that one. Uh, the next noon game, Jaguars Dolphins. Who battle in battle in Florida? Trevor Lawrence versus Hawk Tua. Um, I think this, this is going to be a tough one because I mean you got Christian Kirk on the side with Trevor Lawrence, and you have cheated within Tyreek Hill. The two is going to try to get the ball too, like he did all last season. Um, Jalen Waddle as well. I mean they're built for speed back there, and their backfield is nasty too with. Uh, a chain and Mostert. This team is built for a playoff run, and there's nothing to stop them but themselves. If they can keep putting it all together, this team will have a, a long, long season ahead of them, uh, and a successful season. Also, with the Jags, they can definitely put it together too with ETN, Trevor Lawrence, Christian Kirk, or uh, yeah, and Calvin Ridley. So, yeah, look for that because they, they've got a strong, strong squad as well. Um, I do put this one in the Dolphins, Dolphins side, though. I think it's uh, a three-point game. It's going to be, you know, it may come down to the last last minute with, you know, Sanders kicking a, a field goal to, for the Dolphins to win. Um, I think it's going to be a very good game, an exciting game. I w wouldn't be shocked to see Tyreek, you know, hit two-plus touchdowns in this one. Same with uh, ETN to get at least one and – Calvin really to, to possibly have a breakout season as well. The guy's really had some some shit luck that he's put on himself uh, as well with the gambling and everything else. But uh, I do think he has a, a decent season and uh, runs his runs his routes and hits some hits some big points. He may have a two plus touch, touchdown game as well. See, so, yeah, I look for the Dolphins to pull that one off with a three plus you know three plus over in that one. Um, so let's see. No, three, uh, three points under in that one. So I, th I think they're winning by, you know, last minute football. Uh, next noon game, last noon game that we'll cover, Steelers-Falcons. Um, man, is this a rough one for the Steelers. If you're a Steelers fan, I'm sorry. You've got two starting quarterbacks that you now have battling for this one. I think Russell Wilson took the, took the starting spot from Justin Fields, who just, they just got from the, from the Bears. So... Russell comes from Broncos, and then Justin Fields comes from the Bears. It's a very odd trades. They 
Steelers sent their sent their starting quarterback to the Eagles, who is now a backup within Kenny Pickett. Oddly enough, and they, you know, I think it's for a seventh round pick, if I remember right, but you know, got him for nothing, um, and that's where he's going to be at. And I'm assuming they think they got away with one, but they very well could have. I mean, the guy's a backup quarterback. Um, I don't, uh, I don't see the Steelers being able to put anything together. I mean, Najee Harris in the backfield, uh, George Pickens, who's a very, very good running uh, receiver, but when you have Russell Wilson throwing in the ball, um, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it panning out for him. On the other side, you've got Kirk Cousins, who's obviously now a Falcon, um, throwing to Drake London and Kyle Pitts. Who Kyle Pitts, I do have uh, having a breakout season. Cousins likes his tight ends. Also likes his receivers as well because he's got. I mean, he had Justin Jefferson now going to Drake London. Had T.J. Hawkinson. Now goes to Kyle Pitts. That's almost, in my opinion, level. Uh, Kyle Pitts is very talented. T.J. Hawkinson was very talented. Um, Justin Jefferson is an elite receiver. Drake London is still trying to figure out what he can do. But behind Cousins, you've got B. John Robinson, who is a stud coming out of, I believe it was Texas, where he came from. I uh, was really hoping that the Eagles were going to take him, but they didn't. They decided to go the other round, go defense. But, uh, man, it was exciting to watch what Bijan can do. Him getting the ball from Cousins, who is another quarterback who can scramble and throw as well, will open up that, you know, the running game. Bijan will open up the pass game. So this one I've got, I mean, already you can tell the way I'm going, it's the Falcons in this one. Um, in a blowout. I don't even think that the Steelers come, in, come anywhere close. I, look, I think they're under 10 points in this entire game. Um, be it, you know, Pickens or, or Najee who score, but I, I don't see this game being anything exciting to watch. I think it's going to be a full throttle um, gas gas game for the Falcons. It's once they get the field, they're going to get momentum. It's not going to stop till the till the whistle blows in the fourth quarter. So, look at the Falcons to win that one. Then you get to your evening games, uh, three oh five for us here in the Midwest. Uh, Broncos Seahawks. I mean, who cares <laughs> in this one? Um, man, this is a, it's a rough one. Uh, Broncos, I mean, what do you, what do they, what do you have anymore? I mean, who, who's your, I don't even know who your quarterback is. Like, it's, your, your quarterback locker room is struggling. Uh, I mean, the whole franchise struggles. And then the Seahawks, I mean, you got Geno Smith, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, uh, their other, and um, uh, Keth Walker. I mean, the team is the team is stacked as well um, for for what they have, like what they can put together. They might be able to put together a very late run um, playoff push. We'll see what they can do. But uh, Seahawks hands down in this one as well. I don't see the Broncos being able to really compete with with this team, um, especially get the passing game going, open it up so so Walker can get his get his running in. So you know, hopefully, I mean, the guys had a crazy NFL career. Hopefully, he can. Keep going what he had last year, and uh, and pull out that win. Seahawks by this one by you know ten plus. Uh, next one, Raiders Chargers. This is a in conference um, or in division game between the Raiders and Chargers. Uh, definitely a tough one because regardless of how good you're doing when you come to this this interdivisional games, it gets tough. Um, so the Raiders have who is their quarterback now? I can't think of who their quarterback is. They lost Josh Jacobs. Um, they lost obviously Carr's gone. Um, why can't I think of who they had? They had Garoppolo, but I don't think he's starting either. I can't remember who it is, but again, that just shows how much pay, attention I paid to, to the Raiders. Uh, Chargers and Justin Herbert, who has plantar fasciitis in one of his feet. Uh, we'll see how much that affects him and what he does. They lost Austin Eckler. Um, they lost Keenan Allen. They have some receivers who, again, I, I'm blanking on. And, again, they're running back. Who I can't think of either. Um, this one is going to be a, sh a shit show. You'll see this one. Um, these two battling for... Do you want to say last place? Because, I mean, the Broncos as well. There's no way that the, the Chiefs do not win this, this within their divisional part of anything if they don't win this division then there's something seriously wrong because these three teams between the Broncos Raiders and Chargers 
are completely imploding and rebuilding at the same time. Um, I'll be shocked if either one of these teams are above 500 within the Broncos, Raiders, or Chargers. And if it's anybody, I think it's going to be the, the Raiders who will be above 500. Um, not within the playoff picture at all. Uh, I do have, I th- I'm going to take the Chargers, or the, sorry, the Raiders to win this one. Um, I don't think Herbert can can sustain anything, and we'll see if he can make it to the season with his, with his plantar fasciitis. If they don't say, okay, well, you know, we're going to just take the season, let him rest, and, you know, put him on the bench and save him for next year. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, next evening game, this was actually at 325 between the uh, the Cowgirls and the Browns. I, um, if, you, if you follow this the entire season, I will not pick a Cowboys game. I will not pick the Cowboys to win any of these games. I will go 0-17 and be wrong every time with any game that they have. Uh, and be fine with it against the Browns. So, yes, yeah, so obviously I'm going to take the Browns on this one because uh, I will not give any credit to the Cowboys at all or mention anything with their players. Um, they have talent, sure. Cool. Extremely overrated quarterback. Um, Browns in this one. And then Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper. Nick Chubb is out, still on the pup. Uh, he probably will be back to midseason if that. Uh, so if you do play fantasy and you can stash him for – him to come back mid-season. That's what I've done in a few leagues. Hopefully he does. If not, then he sat on my reserve spot, took up a spot, whatever. I don't really care. Um, but, yeah, I think this one um, will be it, – it'll probably be tough for him. But, uh, I mean, let's be honest, the Browns are not going to win this one. So I said I wasn't going to do it, but let's just be honest. It's, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to sit here and act like the Browns have a chance. Um, next one. 325 Commanders Buccaneers I'm I'm not sold on the Commanders new rookie quarterback um, I know they brought in they lost John Dotson whatever traded to the Eagles so that cuts down somebody they have they still have Scary Terry with Terry McLaurin there uh, who's a solid running back uh, Brian Robinson Jr. Or, sorry receiver Brian Robinson Jr. the running back and also Austin Eckler is there um, we'll see what happens uh so Jaden Daniels, I think is the same, is the, the new rookie. Um, he's getting high praise. A lot of people say coming out of camp, you know, in preseason, he's he's looked decent. He's he's throwing well. Um, so maybe they put something together. But again, you got Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, um, Rashid White. Solid solid squad. A lot of uh, a lot of games played. A lot of season veterans on that team, including their offense defense. Uh, should be. A, f- a fun game to watch, but I mean, I'm gonna take Buccaneers in this one. Uh, Buccaneers are gonna probably beat this team by a touchdown. I'll give them. I mean, I'll give the some some credit to the Commanders. I'll give them a, a seven, you know, within a seven point loss to this one. I don't think I'm gonna pull it out though. Uh, Sunday night game: Rams Lions. Stafford versus Goff. Two teams that traded their, their quarterbacks. They keep doing this with this these two teams matchups. Goff used to be. A Ram, Stafford used to be a Lion. Stafford found a success within the Rams. Goff is finding a lot more success with the Lions. Uh, kind of crazy to see these two swap quarterbacks and both these guys become successful. Stafford won a Super Bowl with the Rams, um, seeing what he did there. Um, man, and the, the Lions offense has become, and it's become dangerous over the years uh, with the addition of Amon Ross St. Brown, um, Jameer Gibbs, David, David Montgomery in the backfield there. Uh, those two are going to split time as well. So um, Aiden Hutchinson in, on the defense there, I mean, that's a solid, solid team. Um, only downfall is with the Rams. Um, Stafford is obviously elite in what he does, uh, arguably. I mean, a top, a top 10 quarterback, hands down. Same with same with Goff. Goff, I would put a little bit higher than Stafford um, by like one or two positions. Um, but... You got Puka Nakua, who had a breakout season last year. Obviously, Cooper Cup there as well. Um, I can't remember who their tight end is. I want to say Hayden Hurst, but I don't think it's right. Um, but yeah, Kyrie Williams in the backfield. Could be an interesting time because I believe he's also going to be running um, their special teams, punt return, if it's not kick return as well. So that's kind of crazy to have your starting running back back there doing that. But, you know, whatever. Uh, one one thing that I think is going to make a huge difference on the Rams team is that they lost Aaron Donald. He retired and is uh, no longer with the team. So we'll see how their defense looks because um, that's a big, big 
gap in their in their defense and a big shoes to fill. Um, but that's gonna. I think a lot of that's going to fall on the D-backs within the Rams to shut down St. Brown. You know, obviously with Montgomery and Gibbs and they're back in the Lions backfield, they're going to have to stuff the holes big, and that's that's where you're going to lose it because Donald's not there. But um, you know, I hate to be like, oh, one guy, one guy makes their their defense, but when you lose somebody big like that, one big leader, it takes you know the guy next next man up, got to step up, you know, fix it and see what you can do. So. Um, this one, man, this is a tough one to take, but I will take the Lions in this one, and I I take it by you know a three point game, not a one point game. Um, in this one, it's going to be a tough one. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rams win either, uh, but I will take I will put my money on the, on the Lions in this one to win that one. I I think it's going to be fun to watch, especially the first Sunday night game, a good game. Thursday night game is slated to be great. Friday night game hopefully is great. It's not a complete shit show for that. And then Sunday night, I'm excited to watch as well. Um, Monday night, surprisingly, Monday night's game, Jets, Niners. Um, I have not been really excited to watch the Jets play, but with the what the Jets have done, um, man, I'm, kind of, I'm I'm excited to see what they can do. Uh, obviously, the Niners have, you know, Brock Purdy, <laughs> guy has an amazing season off the bench, being Mr. Irrelevant in the draft, um, made a huge run. Made it to the Super Bowl already. Um, I do think he does regress a little bit this season. But when playing the Jets, uh, I mean, you've got McCaffrey behind. you got Debo Samuel. Finally, they came to terms and they re-signed Ayuk. you got George Kittle. I mean, you got both on the other side on defense as well. Um, but Jets have a solid defense, surprisingly. Uh, Sauce Gardner, they have a solid, solid defense. Um, very tough defense that they, they may be able to show up and show out against, against Debo. And and Ayuk, you know, if you can if you can shut Kittle down, that's a big one too. But stopping McCaffrey's one of the bigger ones. Um, you let that guy get going, and he's just he's hard to hard to stop, hard to keep up with. Um, I don't know why Carolina let him go. You know, there's something obviously was was there that they thought was going to happen. Uh, he is dealing with a cap injury as well. Um, they like to say that you know it's going to hinder him all season. Maybe it does, but. I've seen this man after uh, after games. I've seen you know some interviews and things like that, and some other you know behind the scenes stuff. And the dude is bruised head to toe, um, and I'm sure that's how a lot of the running backs, or just even the linemen, at that look. But I've never really, I guess I've never really seen it. Um, this may have been day after, but the dude was bruised from head to toe. Big ass bruises everywhere. Um, but again, life. I mean, you're you're hitting somebody, you're going to get bruised. Yes, it's, it happens, obviously. But to see it is a whole other thing. Um, I will take. Uh, I actually am going to take the Jets in this one. I'm going to take the Jets, and they beat the Niners at home on Monday night to start the season um, to kind of humble the Niners and probably more likely put a dangerous fire underneath that team because they're they're the favorites right now in the NFC to win it all to go back to the Super Bowl. You know, do their thing. Um, they're hungry. A very hungry team. Um, yes. The Eagles are hungry as well, but I think they're they're really gonna have to prove themselves because they're they get shit on every year. Always the underdogs, hence the mass before the year the women's Super Bowl. But it is what it is. But uh, yes, fun fun week. Game start tonight. Very excited. This season is going to be fun, uh, like every season. I look forward to it. Uh, Sundays are my my fun days. Once uh once school starts, I know my my fun time is ready to start two or three weeks after that. So look forward to it. Let me know in the comments uh, who your favorite team is, how much you hate the Eagles, because I know I'm going to get hate. Um, anything else, if you want me to cover betting, fantasy, you know, I'm not an expert. I have fun with it. I mean, obviously, yes, I've won fantasy leagues, things like that. I've won a few dollars here or there. I'm not an expert, but I do enjoy talking, and I will talk it. If you want to come on that, come on an episode and, you know, talk back and forth and everything else, let me know. I'm more than welcome to bring people on. Have some fun. Hang out, talk football, because it is football season. It's back, and for the next, what, 20 weeks, we got nothing but football to talk about. Um, yes, be sure to check out Sig over on uh, YouTube, Twitch, Kick, and TikTok. He's, he's going, he goes live on those every Thursday night, um, which might be a little bit of a hindrance because Thursday night football. <laughs> I love to play, but I also love to watch football, so 
I may not stream as much on Thursdays anymore. I may watch the games as we play. We'll see. I don't know. I'll probably do both. But uh, if it's an Eagles game, I probably will stream. I'll be watching that while I'm playing. So, yes, check us out. Two guys, one game pad. Obviously, wherever you can find find us, we're there. TikTok, Instagram, everywhere, anywhere. Um, also, check out Ring Rage Report. That's our other one we cover wrestling. Uh, we do it mainly around the, the big pay reviews that are coming up. We do some fallouts every now and then. That's over on YouTube. We don't uh, we don't really post too much of that uh, on iTunes and things like that. We've kicked it to YouTube, so you get to watch it a little bit more um, that way. I think we're getting getting more views on that one, so it's not going to be just a straight up podcast. It's just a uh, kind of the YouTube specials that we do. But yeah, let us know what you think. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, until the next one. Bye, bitch.